When you purchase the TIC 1.0 600 amp kit, you will receive these items. A 600 amp AC controller with Bluetooth that can work with 36 to 72 volt drive systems. A connector cable from controller to solenoid. A mounting plate with all the associated hardware. And an on-the-fly programmer that allows you to customize your ride by adjusting speed, regen, and torque. The tools required for a TAC 1.0 install are a socket driver with an extension, a 10mm, 11mm, and 13mm sockets, an 11mm wrench, wire cutters, and Phillips number 3 screwdriver. Optionally, if you're working with a body on the vehicle, you may need a light as well. Two Bluetooth apps are available. One for dealers and technicians that allows them to remotely troubleshoot and customize the cart. And a second app for end users that allows such features as cart lockout with pin, speedometer, and exact battery voltage. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure our key is turned off. We'll actually remove it from the ignition and put it off to the side. So the next step is to disconnect the battery. You can disconnect the battery positives or negatives. I usually disconnect it from the middle of the pack. Make sure you don't have any other accessories connected on there. Then we're going to remove the battery cover. And we'll move it off to the side. Next, we'll remove the battery positive bus bar. And we'll move this off to the side. We won't be reusing it. So the next portion is to remove the connector. When you take the connector out, there's a tab on here that you'll have to pull up. You could use a small screwdriver to pull that out. Next, we're going to remove the resistor wires. You've already loosened the one off of the solenoid. We'll take that off. We'll remove the one from the bottom of the controller. So our next step is to remove the resistor cage itself. And we'll move it off to the side. Next, we'll remove our battery negative cable. And our motor phase wires. And then we'll remove the controller itself with the last two bolts. So now we're going to insert our stands into our floorboard. The front stand may need to be screwed in. Then we'll be adding a nut, a washer, and a lock washer underneath to the bottom of the stud. And we'll leave the nuts loose underneath. Next we'll put our stabilizer stand on the bottom of the plate and we'll do this by uh, tightening it in with a beveled screw from on top of the plate. And we'll 
tighten that one down. Then we'll add the plate on top of the stands we've already inserted and tighten them down. Once we have those installed, we will tighten the plate from underneath. So we're going to take our bolts here and we'll, uh, again with a lock washer and a washer, we're going to insert them into the corner, the front corners of the plate, and we're going to leave them loose. We're going to slide the controller in here afterwards. We leave these controllers loose so that if you have the body on the vehicle when you're doing the installation, you can slide the controller in underneath here. We'll add our last two screws to the back of the plate. And then we'll tighten them down. Then we will route our motor cables around the outside of the original controller mounting. So we'll remove our bolts from our controller. Okay, and then we're going to connect our cables up. So we're gonna install U to U, V to V, W to W, uh, using these supplied bolts, and washers and lock washers. tighten them down. Okay, so we're going to add on our battery positive cable. And this will be going to our contactor. And then we'll be adding our resistor and solenoid mount back on. We'll use the supplied bolt, washer, and lock, wa lock nut, and we'll use the original mounting holes. And then we will tighten them up using a wrench on the back side. So now we're going to add our battery positive cable onto our solenoid and we'll add our black lead from the resistor on top of that and then we'll tighten it up with the original nut. Okay, so we're going to tighten this up with a 13 millimeter wrench or socket. We also need to tighten our battery positive post underneath. Then we will add the red wire from the resistor. We're going to run the red wire from the resistor over to the resistor output of the controller. This is using a 10 millimeter socket or wrench. And finally we'll connect our battery negative cable. and we'll tighten that down with a 10 millimeter socket or wrench again. So this is our RXV adapter harness. What we'll be doing is we'll be installing this into the controller, gently insert it, not forcing on any pins, it should slide in freely. Then we'll push in on the bottom of the tab. This will lock the connector in place. Okay, we're gonna take the original controller connector and we're going to insert it into our harness module. the programming end of it will not be used. 
And finally, we'll zip tie this to the side of the resistor cage mount. And just trim off the excess. So now we'll reattach the cover. To install the on-the-fly programmer, we're going to remove the cup holders from the EasyGo. There are three clip-on uh, nuts underneath here. When you loosen them up, you should be able to just pull this out. Next, we're going to take the uh, end of the cable and we're going to feed it through the body hole on the dash through the hole on the back of the controller. We're going to feed it through and leave ourselves a little bit of slack for where we're going to mount the controller for the programmer. We're going to mount ours on the dash itself, so that should give us plenty of room. And now we'll feed this back through into the channel going through the floor. And we're going to feed this right underneath the throttle pin here. So what we're going to do is we're going to zip tie the cable to the OEM harness. Then we're going to zip tie again to the factory wiring harness. So now we're going to connect our on-the-fly programmer to our harness module. It will only plug in in one direction. Then we'll plug in the original controller harness. And once we've done this, we'll zip tie this to the resistor cage. What we do is we're going to zip tie our motor phase wires to the resistor cage. We're just going to make sure that they don't move anywhere on us. Notice that the original communication plug from the uh, OEM controller is no longer used. Then button up the controller and everything will fit underneath. Okay, and now we're going to mount our on-the-fly programmer onto the vehicle. On the back, there is a Velcro tab. What we'll do is we'll peel that, the backing off of it. And we'll just place this onto the front dash. So the on-the-fly programmer is removable from the Velcro with the Velcro strap, so that you can move it towards your hands if you need to. And We'll now repower the system. Test your installation by turn the key to the forward. Make sure the rear wheels are off the ground. Gently step on the throttle. And now you can enjoy the power of the TAC system.